You know, I did. I just thought I would talk about the tall grass prairie because what are we going to talk about here at the airport? So I started researching all these things and you know what I did? I made a drawing of what I thought and then I made a 20 by four foot piece of plastic and took it out there. And oh my God, you got to stand back 50 feet. So I had the flowers like this big because I was really going to shove it full, but no. <laughs> if you want to see what's going on, I had to really enlarge everything. So anyway, I was working on that. And since uh, I do a lot of China painting, so this is, that's what this is. It's, uh, I bought the tiles, I think they're Portuguese and they, were really well behaved because a lot of times you have to, uh, China paint's really translucent and needs a couple of coats to come up, to come up, to be able to see the color. So a lot of these tiles have been fired five times and in the kiln things expand and contract, expand and contract. So especially tiles are tricky. And then one other problem I had was that there's not since they have a war in the Ukraine, you couldn't get mullite, so there's no tile setters, which is something you set the tiles on. They have to be standing up in the kiln. So anyhow, I worked on about um, a four, you know, thing like this at a time. I couldn't, I could only put about that many in the kiln, uh, these tiles at a time, because I didn't have enough tile setters. And so I had to build a 20 foot table, and I built this 20 foot easel so I could do the drawing on it. And, I'm so lucky to have this big studio. And um, anyhow, that's what I was doing. Then I built this 20 foot spray booth. I had an intern. I'm like, help me get up here on this dolly. I have shell. I'm not climbing anything. <laughs> so I had that 20 foot piece of plastic spray booth up there spraying this. Because this is uh, lead paint. After it's fired, it's done. It's like your grandma's dishes. So, um, you know, uh, and then it was really fun doing the research, and this is going to be a QR code with all these little stories on it, and uh, I've been busy working on this thing for the uh, dinnerware museum called Entomophagonous Eating, which is about eating bugs, help save the planet, and 80% protein and all that. So I have some That's recipes for bugs. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, some different funny little stories about um, all of the stuff, how to deal with poison ivy and about sweet grass. And I know mosquitoes are not from, but they're from Southeast Asia, but really? <laughs> well, I think we, I don't think, I don't think we want to own them, but we do. <laughs> wear blue, wear blue. You're supposed to wear blue to keep mosquitoes off of you. So uh, there's all these funny stories about Is that a part of the texture, or did you add? Yeah, it? no, I, it's, it's the texture of the tiles, and I thought that's fun, because when you're looking at that tall grass prairie, it is kind of yeah. like the ocean, mm -hmm. so I thought, that looks good, that looks good, yeah. Tell us a little bit about when we mentioned this is part of the permanent collection, uh -huh. and it's not in the museum, but it's a different location than a gallery or museum setting. Was there anything in your process you did differently knowing hundreds of thousands of people may be touching your piece or it's it's going to be there permanently? Was that, did you have to change your process in any way? No, this is, you can just wipe it off with Windex, it's done. No, it's just, <laughs> it's on there, which is really nice. I don't have, yeah, no, it's, it's perfectly fired, it's fired on, so it's there. So you don't want to scrub it with Comet and you don't want to scrub your grandmother's plates with Comet either. But yeah, that's it. yeah. It was, that's all. The, I had since this paint is so translucent. So I I did the drawing and then I tried filling it in and then I had to fill it in some more times to get it more yellow. And then it takes these firings in between. How long did it take you, Linda? Well, I worked from February through July every day. When it was COVID, that was fine. And then I had to, to I had to mask the whole thing off which took more than a week for each panel. Wow. So, so that I could spray it with the background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God, and the building this 20 foot spray booth was just insane. How much does it weigh and how's the transportation and installation? Yeah, it weighs, so yeah, Lynn had the idea, just cut it into four by five foot panels. And then I'm gonna fill this with that same stuff when I get out to the airport. And they're gonna let they're gonna let me work on it, which they didn't let other people. But wow. Benaya has built these carriers. They're about 180 pounds for a, a 
square mm -hmm. for a four by five foot piece. And then uh, Ashir is building the frame and uh, it's gonna slide on. So it'll be in two parts and it'll just slide over the top of this. So when you say Ashir, who is Ashir? Ashir Akram, and he's down the street here and he's a metal worker. And yeah, if you need metal work done, he's really fabulous. Benaya working on it also, Benaya Lusky? Yeah, Benaya helped me um, while well, he cut the tiles. Okay, so how did you pick because <coughs> yeah. these are the most famous. I was really going to do a lot more, but this is the main event going on in my mind and the tall grass prairie and stuff that I know about. And I used to really be engaged in plants and what they can do and how they can heal you. And yeah, of course, you know that this can make coffee. And these are the original no, mosquito cherries. Right? <laughs> no, we don't know that. Oh, of course, well, you I know, know all that. that. I because know. I'm really <laughs> interested in all that. Yeah, so these were the of Missouri wild cherries and the original maraschino cherries before they started dyeing them and, and bleaching them and doing all that stuff to them. And there's a recipe That's for cool. them. Yeah, so there's a recipe for them in here. And then, um, so yeah, there's funny stories about everything. And those are Missouri bees. Who, who knew that there was a Missouri bee? That's interesting, huh? So, Linda, these are all going to be, all of the explanations and descriptions about the plants that you chose are going to be on a QR code? Yeah, they'll be on a QR code on the corner, so we can get bored. Yeah, the thing is fairly well behaved for me. Um, but hopefully the stories are a little silly. Can you tell us where uh, Linda's piece will be in the airport? Yeah, it's going to be in Concourse A, I think near American Airlines. Yeah, oh good. So, yeah, that's again. that's yeah. my first, that's my card. That's yeah. my frequent flyer as American. <laughs> <laughs> so that's I think good. It's, it's the first <laughs> the first gate to your right in Concourse A, but it's number eighteen, and it is American Airlines. At least that's yeah. Uh, Linda, you had mentioned to me on several different occasions that I've come here how difficult the engineering of making this come to fruition. Can you explain that a little bit more about just the sheer engineering of this piece? Oh, well, my husband had a thing he was building a 20-foot boat on, so I brought that thing up here and made a 20-foot easel because how are you going to, I mean, what? And then I took all those tables back there that I worked on and I made them all the same height, so <laughs> and I had all those tiles on there to make the drawing, but it's hard, you can't reach across, so then I had to tip it up. So then how do you do that? I had a bunch of, I don't know, concrete blocks and I had it tipped up and then, and then yeah, 20 foot spray booth and then running it back and forth through the kilns in the back, so. Linda, how many people do you have working with you for you to help you do all moving those things around? Oh, Benaya came some, and I had this Eleanor Floyd to help me mask this off. Because that's a lot of extra work. Yeah, I, mean, that's I just a lot do of it. heavy lifting, but you're yeah, a heavy lifter. I'm just, yeah, I just, like, right? I don't know. It's fun. I, I like making stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'd rather be doing if not at the computer. You talked about five firings. Can you talk about why you need to do yeah, five firings? Yeah, so you want to have an outline. i got to see where I'm going. I couldn't put it in blue because if I put the blue, how did I know where to erase it? So I did all the main body of this, and then you now that that yellow looks pretty weak. How am I going to punch it up? So it needs another layer of pink. It needs another layer. The pink looks really washed out. So then you have to keep coming, keep coming. Maybe a little purple, or give it some. So you don't see that until you take it out of the kiln and you see what it really is going to look like. Well, yeah. no, the uh, tr chime paint's pretty true, ah. but you just if you if you put it on too thick, it cracks off. So, it, yeah, so it's a lost art form in a way. Some people are getting interested. It was, uh, I think Woodrow Wilson had a China painting class at the White House and whenever he was, <laughs> it was a big thing for ladies at the turn of the century.